Hey what's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today's video will feature a brand new tutorial section called material series. In this series I will have one reference image something like this one in the corner here and I will try to replicate this material in a shader mostly or I will try to do it all procedurally without any texture help and I just want to show you the techniques I will be using to generate those interesting surfaces. So uh, more or less every week I will try to upload one of these tutorials where I go around in the city and I take snapshots of reference images and use them later on in those tutorial sections. Uh, so this is my current setup. In the top I have the hypershade, the bottom left is the reference image and in the center here is the actual current render and on the top right this is the current shader which is assigned to the sphere. So my first step would be to generate or create this rusty metal or not ru really rusty it's more eroded and you can see it's it's not really chipping off but it's like iron which is a bit gone a bit rusty so and then you've got these not sure what it is exactly it might be golden paint which peeled off at some point and then you have like these grayer areas which are like, I know, mold or something. So I will try to replicate this effect. So it's more or less three shaders. And I'll start with the biggest one, which is the top part. Um, though I won't use layered shaders, um, I will use a different approach using um, layered textures, which in the end piped all to the same shader, but drive certain or different values inside the shading network. So let's create this. So I first will create a basic metal which has a bit of diffuse which is the rust so first um, let's and I'll try to be very um, proper with the names so the first thing I want to do is create an AL layer color which is like a Photoshop a layer stack where you can plug in different textures so this one plugs into the diffuse slot duplicate this and where is it and this one goes to the reflectivity uh, where is it? Specular 1. Don't I have it here? Don't see it. So this one goes to the reflectivity. And another one which will go to the edge color. Edge tint. M switch this to metallic mode. Uh, and strength will be on 1 because I will drive everything with a color. And then we have one last one, which is a layer float, which connects to the specular one roughness. And these are all my base nodes, and I'll quickly rename them. This is float underscore spec R for specular one roughness. This one goes to the specular edge tin, specular color. F90 for 90 degrees angle. Let's just call it spec F90, otherwise it might be also the other one. Spec F90. This one goes to spec F0. Capital F. All right. So I just do this once and then it's properly set up. And this is just diffuse underscore diffuse. There we go. So these are now the basic layers I will be using. And each one has its own important aspect of the shader. So the first thing I want to do, um, I just make, want to make it rougher. So this is called rust, rust roughness. And let's try something around 0.6 and play here. So this is now the overall roughness I'm trying to achieve. You can see this is more shiny. So we just might dull it, uh, might dull it down a bit more. I just eyeballing this quickly just to get something with some resemblance to similar to this amount of reflectivity. Right. An important thing as well is change the distribution to be GGX. It just gives you a nicer tail in those specular glints and it's overall more softer. Right, so this is the first thing. And 
so jumping back to the diffuse, um, let's pick a color, just something in here in the shadow area, something like this. So what you actually need to do is uh, use a raw and pick this color. I'm not sure if this should be, is different, but it should be different. And then going back here. Rec 709 is my viewing space. So this is, let's say this is the base rust color. It, it, I can change it to be a bit more in the red side and a bit darker, a bit more saturated and alpha is one. So this is now my base color, which is currently still too bright. We need to go really dark on this, something maybe like this. And then the other thing we need to do is for the F0 color, we also need a color which is the reflectivity color and the higher you make this the more shiny it is or the more a metal it will be um, for rust or for corroded iron it's, it's actually a base with an iron um, appearance so we can try to I have some presets in here uh, I should have where are they oh it's on the other machine anyways there are some scientific values for um, certain values and I will just try to replicate those um, for iron spec color is it's it's pretty it's a bit yellow and it's very let's say dark like something like this because it's not pure iron it is definitely uh, corroded it's not a it's not clean values and I will later on add a texture in here to break it up a bit more and then for the F90 color most metals are purely white on the edge tint so I will just enable this call this rust layer and just fully white for the edges right so this is the base so I will also change the resolution so we see it more in detail let's go to 100 and then press O in the render viewer just to zoom in a bit so now we have a bit clearer idea what we are seeing. So the next thing I want to create is a bump map, which is this base noise. So for this, I will also create an AL layer float, which will be the bump at some point for all the materials. So that's why I use a layer as well. So this is the bump and the out value goes into a bump to denote as a bump value. And the depth is driven by uh, this is the strength. So we ca if you have proper values, you can leave this at one. If 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 not, in most cases, one is way too strong. So you need to dial it down. Um, but we are generating the bump, so I can just drive it properly. So this goes into the bump slot, like so. And now we have all the fancy stuff connected to the shading network, like so. And I save and let's just create an AI noise for the first bump slot. And this is the rust, like so. And this goes to layer one, alpha is one as well. So now we should have, or we should definitely see something happening. There we go. So I just restarted the IPR session. So now we can see that we see definitely something on the surface. And I also, also like to work in isolated mode, uh, which is just a float representation of your selected node. And currently, I, I want to see this. And I, if I want to just um, work on this layer, I can lock this using a lock on the bottom left. And if I select different nodes, it will stick to this uh, selected node. So let's work on this a bit. So definitely, it's too big, the noise, comparing the sizes here. Uh, let's zoom in a bit more. So let's increase the scale to let's say two. So we get get definitely finer noise, and it might be still a tiny bit too big. So let's try 2.5, not 25, 2.5. Right. So this might work already. So let's just head over to the shaded mode and see. Okay, way too strong. So now we can dial back the amplitude. If it's zero, it's off. So now we can bring really subtle those values in. And you can start to see that the surface is being um, broken up now. And it's it's too uniform. 
like it's everywhere looking the same. So I will use this noise, which is a good base. And I will use this and multiply this with a different noise pattern. So we get a more broken up effect. So to do so, um, I will create another AI noise. Or oh, let's use a different one. Let's use the AI fractal. And AL fractal, like this. And these two guys are get multiplied together using an a AL combine float, which have a multiply operation on default. So out value one and in here out value red goes in here and they connect to layer one. So now you can see that this is broken up way more. So to, to see the effect, um, Let's just try to make them a bit bigger. And then we dial this one down. And now you can actually see you get some, some darker spots which are less bumpy and more wider spots which are more bumpy. And I'm dialing this down with the color. So if you want more control, you can add more gain and then you get a more um, defined spec map. And then let's just play around with the frequency a bit. Yeah, this is actually quite nice. So let's see how the shaded version looks like. Yeah, it might be a bit too subtle, so I just bring bring it more down. So you can see now this is a strong area. Here's a more subtle area. And it's already broken up. You can see this here quite good. So here it's stronger and then it fades out a bit more. So I'm trying to achieve some areas which are less bumpy than others. And this is how you do it. So, But I want the oval effect a bit stronger. So let's just try to 0.6. And now it should be a bit more apparent what's actually happening on these surfaces. So more, more bump, less bump. That's pretty cool. And if we want to have like a bit stronger overall like dents and stuff or like these edges uh, you would need to multiply another map on top so you can actually chip off some areas or have really flat ones okay let's just let's just do one more um, AI let's try an AI noise uh, AL remap uh, sorry AL fractal sorry for, for the confusion go back to isolated mode uh, save the scene. I tend to save quite often because um, if I do get crashes, I have all the all the um, progress saved already. So just better be safe than sorry. I wanted a combine, and this one goes in here, and the red goes in here, and then out goes into layer one. So same story, but now I want to actually just look at AL fractal and I want to see what I'm doing here. So I, I'm changing the octaves, which is also levels to two. So we get more straight lines and then I'm changing the frequency. I don't know, something like this. And then in here you have a remap option. So you can actually have sharp edges or you can actually clamp values. So um, not this one, clamp the other one. Okay, so you get actually flat surfaces, flat colors, which are then um, really chipping off values of the other ones. And then I want to work with the input mins and max. Maybe we want two levels. No, that's too much. Uh, let's try the gain. Gain only works if you have at least two levels, I think. Yeah. Okay, we can just stick with one. Let's see what else we can do. Input min max distortion. Breaks it up even more. Right, okay, let's just try this. And then we need to invert those values, like so. And then they get multiplied. And then we see uh, some spots appearing here. Currently, this is uh, not clamped enough. So we might need to work with those values a bit more. Let's see if we can do that this way. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I mean, we might just need to clamp them a bit differently. There we go. That's what I wanted to achieve. And let's work back on the input mins. Right. Let's see how this looks if we go up one. Okay, now you can see these areas actually have no bump. So if you go back to the shaded mode, these areas are pretty flat. And I, I think it actually helps quite a bit to break up the surface a bit more. You can see that, that here it's like as if there's somehow hammered on here and the bump is totally, uh, totally gone. And let's see how the, the base looks like. Yeah, I think it all pretty much works out quite good. And currently we have a uniform roughness and we we might need to um, use at least one of those uh, noises together to create also the roughness maps because the surface has been corroded. Some areas are more rough than others. And using this approach, I will implement those into the roughness for uh, the rust. So this is the main one. I think I'd like definitely to use those two for the roughness. Um, the more shiny, actually the more flat ones, we can actually just try this to connect this guy into the input of my spec roughness layer, like so. And then this will be now very shiny. We need to remap this, AL remap float. And this is rust underscore uh, rust spec r and the out value connects to the input like this and the out goes to the layer one again and now we can just remap those values and we want the maximum roughness maybe be 0.6 so output max is 0 0.6 and the most um, shiny surface is 0.3. So did that actually work? Point, it did, but it just clamped those values too much. So what do we have here? Point, I'm checking here those values at the bottom. So this is actually 0, 0, 006 pretty shiny obviously let's just re it uh, might be that it's not updated properly all right i just had a crash and i had to redo the fractal part so i just try to uh, do the spec connection one more time so i will just create an al remap float for the spec stuff and i will connect the bump output from here into the remap float i will rename this to be uh, spec rust spec r rust spec r like this and then i connect this before that i will stop the render otherwise it might crash just again and connect this to the input saving and i will update the render and now we should get a more shiny sphere with some rough areas but we still need to remap those values otherwise it's, it will just look too perfect so going back to the isolate selected mode and selecting a roughness you can see that we have values from one a zero perfectly shiny and to really still very dark and i want to remap those values so the input min we want to make it definitely more brighter and we can actually just try to remap them like this. So the brightest color is this, and then we clamp it back down or remap it back down to 0 0.6. So we don't have higher values than 0 0.6. And then we try to bring those values up as well, these ones, to something like 0.2. So now we have a range from 0.8. Let's just go down a bit more. And let's just see how the render looks like now. 
Oh, you might have noticed. No, I did not notice. I had actually plugged this into the wrong slot. So this actually is my base color, or it was my base color, my F0 color for my metal, uh, which is something yellowish. Sorry about that. So just trying to dial back down the metal texture. And this is actually the roughness, which I wanted it to connect to. So I messed up there a bit. And let's save again and connect the out value to layer one roughness. And this is now what we get. So the rust specular R, this is what it currently looks like. And now we need to um, dial in those values so we have a better uh, looking image. I it selected on the this, and then we need to definitely increase this value way more. So let's bring this back up. And now we have a value for the roughness for four. And let's go higher here. So we have rougher dented areas and still very rough normal parts. So let's see. Okay, this is looking better. Uh, now, now I actually come to think that the bump is a bit too strong. So we dial, uh, bring down the uh, dark areas for this guy. So we bring back those flat areas. And overall, it's now, it's now a bit too rough. So let's work on the roughness maps a bit. Okay, I think this is actually now getting there. For the rust, rusty part. This is a bit too bright because it's overcast and well lit from all angles. But the overall reflect reflectance amount, I think, is pretty close. We can work on the F90, uh, F0 a bit more. Uh, just bring back a bit more reflection. Let's just try five. Right. Okay, so now this is my, let's say this is my base rust texture. We can introduce a bit more diffuse color um, to get it more uh, flat, uh, flat and or, uh, rusty looking, something like this. Um, it is metal, but if metal is corroded, it's still it's not perfectly uh, black in the diffuser anymore. And obviously we need to add a texture map to this. So we need to maybe multiply those uh, values as, uh, together as well. So let's do this now. So I'm saving. And these bump values, uh, which come from all my fractals, I will use them as well to multiply the two colors together. So the out value, um, I will connect this first to an AL remap color, just that I have a um, color instead of a float. So I'm connecting all three values in here. And this guy connects to my layer two input. And this is actually rust. And let's call this rust breakup. Okay. And this is called, let's just remap the color to RGB and save. And in here, if I go to isolate selected, what do we see? Currently we see nothing because we don't have any alpha. So if I bring this fully down, we have this, which is my bump map. And I use multiply to bring the, uh, multiply those values together. And a really soft value, or we can also try different modes like overlay. Let's see how overlay will look. Yeah, you can see that it is uh, breaking it up a bit more. Oh, this is actually pretty interesting difference because now we get even like yeah I think we can work with this this is actually pretty cool so as you can see I'm also just testing out modes and I'm just on the fly checking what what works what's what looks good and stuff so now we have a really subtle effect on here because it is still very shiny let's just bring back uh, dial down the f0 